Hey guys, we've got a very interesting lecture on regressive taxation coming up. So in this lecture, we'll go through this in a four-step process. First of all, we will define regressive taxation. Secondly, we will look at examples. Thirdly, we will look or we'll evaluate the relative strengths and weaknesses of regressive taxation. And fourth, we'll look at an example or an, a working example, I should say. Of regressive taxation, a working example. So let's start off with the definition first of all. So regressive taxation is a tax where the tax paid decreases as a proportion or percentage of taxable income as income rises. So that is a very simple definition of regressive taxation. So it is a tax where the tax paid decreases as a proportion or percentage of taxable income as income rises. So we're going to look at examples of regressive taxation now. So two, this is one. We we'll define it. I'm going to put that at tick. And secondly, we will look at examples of regressive taxation. So first of all, we have GST, and the GST is the goods and services tax. It is collected by the federal government on behalf of state and territory governments. We have uh, included in the GST. We uh, it doesn't include actually health, education, drugs, or prescription drugs, unprocessed foods, and rental accommodation because they are considered necessities and so are exempt from collection of taxation. And secondly, we have what is known as excise tax. And these are taxes added onto the price, like the GST, that are added onto the price of goods and services. So let's say tobacco, petrol, and alcohol, we have taxes added onto them so as to decrease or discourage the consumption of them because of the negative externalities involved. Thirdly, we have tariffs, and these are aimed to protect local businesses. So there are three types of or examples of taxation, or major regressive taxation, uh, in the economy at the moment. So we've done examples. We're going to look at three we're going to evaluate them. So why are regressive taxations good? We're just going to put a green tick here. Tick for good and a cross for bad. So first of all, why they are good is because they help raise around 27% of the federal budget income. So 27% of budget revenue. So we know that the budget needs money or funds in order to conduct budgetary policy and regressive taxation helps this cause. Again, it discourages consumption of certain goods and services. So as we can see, in the case of excise taxes here, we have excise on alcohol or petrol. Now, as we know, petrol has a negative externality, or the consumption of petrol has a negative externality of pollution. And so the government aims to, wants to decrease the consumption of petrol because of the carbon dioxide emissions and all the pollution involved with consuming petrol. So they add an excise tax onto it. So to discourage people from consuming petrol and to minimize these negative externalities. So that's a good aspect, a positive aspect of regressive taxation. And thirdly, we have protection or protection of local industries. And this comes back to the idea of tariffs where t a tax is added on tax added onto 
imports which makes imports more expensive and therefore helps protect local producers. So we talked about the positives, now we're going to look at the negatives of the regressive taxation. So again, it worsens equity. And we'll talk about how this worsens equity in our working example here. But as a brief concept, it is where the, the proportion of percentage of tax paid decreases as income rises. So therefore, people on lower incomes will pay a higher proportion of their income in tax and therefore have a lower, a decrease uh, rate of purchasing power. And so this would exacerbate the inequity in the economy. So that is a major flaw in regressive taxation in that equity is compromised. So we're going to look at the working example of how this actually worsens equity. I'm just going to rub uh, this out. So we've done all this. I'm just going to look at a working example right here. This is a very simple example of why taxation or regressive taxation can worsen equity. So let's assume that we have a GST of $10 on whatever product, say good alpha. Now we have two people in the economy who wishes to purchase good alpha. We have person A and person B. Now person A earns a measly $100 a week because say person A is a student and he doesn't have a lot of income. Whereas person B is a lawyer and he earns $1,000 a week. So what happens here is that as we can see the proportion of income paid 10 divided by 100 is 10% for person A and only 1% for person B. And so this correlates back to this, um, agrees with this definition of where the tax paid as a proportion of taxable income, 1%, decreases as income increases. So as income increases from $100 to $1,000, the taxable income decreases. And this worsens equity because person A has now, have, has now a relatively lower purchasing power than purchase person B. So that is the major flaw in regressive taxation and since the equity and income distribution is one of the government's major goals, the government aims to try to uh, limit regressive taxation as much as possible or to make regressive taxation as, um, as, as equitable as possible. So that's the lecture on regressive taxation. There are many strengths to regressive taxation, but there is one major flaw in that it worsens equity.